Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night, depending on where you're tuning in from. It is so good to see all of your wonderful, happy, smiling faces again this fine Saturday morning. I always feel like I'm a bit of a radio talk show host when we enter this way, but it's uh, it's important. You gotta you gotta have a way to sort of kick the things off before before we get to all the comments. And on that note, I'm super excited to see so many familiar faces uh, again today. We've already just a quick glance over. I see my architectural sheet metal friend. I see Kevin from Lakeland. I see Janelle. Oh, man, we're going to have fun today. It's going to be a good day. Uh, Robert, good morning from Pensacola, Florida. Morning, Robert. Good to see you. Architectural sheet metal. Good to see you, my friend. Yes, sheet metal training business. Love to strategizing how to turn my viewers into paying customers. Perfect. We will, we will talk about all of those things, uh, specifics as well. But yes, the the name of the game right now is to become a media machine. It's something that I've believed in for a decade now, but I think people are uh, are catching on. It's becoming the new thing to become a, a quote unquote creator and and take advantage of the creator economy, the fastest growing segment of the um, of small businesses right now. Fun. Fun fact. Jefferson, ready for another hour of gems. Oh, Jefferson, it is good to see you here, buddy. I'm glad you could make it. Kevin, dude, you've not missed one. Yeah, I tell you, you ever don't show up, I'm going to send out a search party just to make sure you're okay. It is so good to see you there. Janelle, thank you for the gold nuggets you pump on every video you put out there. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you for watching them all. Let me see if I can shrink that down. I feel like we always, we never take advantage of all the space over on this side. I'm always looking that way. One day, we'll get, we'll get something over there. Uh, let's dive in. What are the key metrics every marketer can focus on to make ads more profitable? Ooh, right on. Nice, easy question to kick things off. So the metrics that you want to focus on to make things more profitable are essentially you want to look at your entire campaign from click to conversion and everything in between. So the main thing that we start out with is like impressions, CPM, cost per mil. How much is it costing us to reach a thousand people? Depending on your targeting and your ad and all that, it's going to fluctuate. But that's step one. Then we're going to look at cost per click. We're going to look at click through rate. We're going to look at also cost per link click and link click through rate. But kind of just with, let's not go too geeky right off the bat. But anyways, you'll look at those as well. Then you're going to look at the conversion rate on your sales page and, and everything else down the funnel. You're going to find the ones that look like they need the most attention. You're going to focus there. Once your funnel is cracking, then you're going to want to dump more traffic into it. Let's digital. Good night from Pakistan. Good night, my friend. Good to see you, David, the armpit of the South. It's funny, dude. I see your, um, I see your name there and I, I know where we're going before I even read it. So I love it. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing amazing. Thank you. I hope you're doing well as well. L. Hey, Adam. Hey, L. Good to see you. Pinkenstein. Good stuff. Excellent. Glad you could make it. Maritz. Hey, my friend. Glad you could make it as well. Glad to see you here. Alexa Petrovich. Good afternoon from Serbia. Hey, Alexa, I, have I been to Serbia? I don't think so. All around. I don't think ever into um, into Serbia. So that's awesome. That's my other, that's other Alexa. If she hears me talking to you, she's going to get mad. Uh, pick a sign. Is there a way to get chat GPT implemented into marketing? 100%. I've got a video on this very subject. Go to the YouTube channel or just go to YouTube in general. Type in Adam Earhart. Chat GPT. I got Chat GPT to build me an entire marketing campaign. Um, you will find that video. Fun fact on that video, it's actually the number one video on the channel right now in regards to views over the last 28 days. So uh, interesting. Anyway, like sometimes I'll create a video and uh, I think it's important or fun. And so I'll make it hoping that it's helpful to some people. And then once in a while, it just YouTube's like, yep, everybody wanted that one. And it takes off. And other times YouTube's like, nope, this, nobody wants this one, and they just like bury it. Uh, but then it might come back a year from now, so you never know. Turf Nerd, Lawn Care, amazing name. Good morning, my friend. Good to see you. Patrick Kelly, hey, buddy. Good to see you here as well. Eng Zhao Texiara Tejera, hey, man. Hey, back at you. Glad you could make it. Steven, hey, Adam. Steve from Kenya. Much love, bro. Hey, Steve. Much love back at you. Glad you could make it, buddy. Uh, Jorge Luis, new here. Well, welcome. You'll find that everybody here is friendly and kind and helpful and supportive. So you're in a good place. Kai. Oh, hang on. That was a big question. There we go. Whole lot of words. Let's see. Hey, Adam, when starting a digital agency, what is recommended amount of clients to take on while still maintaining work life balance? I'm a busy mama and want to make sure I'm actively involved. Well, cool. Good for you. Um, good question as well. It's important to the, to think about these things in the early stages. 
Uh, my recommendation though is like you're, you're probably not going to know what that upper limit is until you reach it. So I could give you an arbitrary number like 5, 10, 20, um, but it's going to come down to a, just so many different factors including the level of service that you're providing to the clients, the kind of service that you're providing to the clients, the um, are you doing it all on your own, are there things that you could outsource or delegate, are you... Um, uh, like what are you charging? Are they going to expect access? So there's there's so many things that go into it I can tell you from experience that when I was running Facebook ad campaigns for clients uh, and it was just me I was the guy writing the ads doing the targeting um, Setting up all the metrics and this was in the early days as well So the clients weren't paying thousands and thousands and thousands a month. They were paying a I can't remember let's say let's say around a grand or so um, I found that there was a sweet spot at like 10 clients, 1,000 bucks a month, 10 clients, 120 grand a year. It was like a nice sweet spot with just me in those early days of it. Um, I pushed it to 20 clients, 23, 24, with might have been just me. I might have brought someone in to help a little bit. And that was a stretch. Like I was, I was just bag tired all the time. So I found it was easier than, okay, let's go 10 clients at 2K a month or five clients at 5K a month or whatever it is. So you can, um, you can vary it around, but you're going to have to figure that one out. I think... In the beginning stages, just um, just go for it and don't be afraid to push the limit a little bit. Ah, Patrick, nice glasses. LOL, LOL as in good, like lots of love. Obviously, right? Yeah, my um my contacts ran out and uh, and we're trying new ones and they can't get them in stock. So we're wearing these, we're rocking these bad boys today. Uh, L, let's see. Hey Adam, what are your thoughts on Facebook lifetime budget and daily budget pros and cons? Which one do you like more? Excellent question. My preference is a uh, daily budget, like 100% of the time. I, I basically never use lifetime budget. There are pros and cons to each, like set it and forget it nature, the, the concept that Facebook's going to have more opportunity to um, do something called day parting, which we don't really advise so much with Facebook ads, more so with Google ads where you're like running them at certain times of day. Uh, there's, I don't know, like there's, possibly the chance that it could capitalize on a run one day and like take things off and then the next day it's like nobody's here i still like daily budget and the reason is is because it gives me more control they're still going to fluctuate 10 15 percent or so but yeah gives you more control okay brandon hey i'm new to the lives but i've been watching you for a few months awesome branding good to have you here i'm glad you could make it i'm a personal trainer and have just started my own business at the age of 19 excited to learn more from you well my man, good for you. Congratulations on starting a new business. That's amazing. Um, a couple of people you probably want to check out. Number one, look at uh, Dave Crawford. He's got a business channel, uh, YouTube channel on marketing for fit pros. And also look at uh, Mark Morris, Dr. Mark. He's got a, um, a YouTube channel on helping people start and grow nutrition consulting businesses, which as a fit pro... I'm going to strongly suggest you look into as an um, alternative uh, additional source of revenue. So Dr. Mark Morris and uh, Dave Crawford for some other fitness tips. Michael Montgomery, good morning, Adam. Morning, Michael. Good to see you here. Patrick, how many PPC emails should I be sending out daily or weekly? Um, you're going to have to clarify that one for me because PPC and emails don't normally go in the same hand like or, or in the same sentence. Are we t Like pay-per-click, right? PPC, Google Ads, things like that, and then email. So are you talking about like cold emails to try to get clients? Um, I'm going to assume that's what you mean. In which case, as many as possible. Honestly, like if cold email is your strategy, volume is the name of the game. Most people don't do enough. They send out 10 a day, 20 a day, uh, like 500 a day, 300 a day, a lot, a lot. You're going to need to use software. You're going to need to use uh, some kind of automation to make sure that you don't get bammed or spammed or anything like that. Make sure the emails are good when you're sending that volume of them. Um, hopefully that helps. Let's grow. Good morning, Adam. Looking cool in specs. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate the kind words. My question is, how is outreach for website clients is changed after chat GPT? I don't think it's really changed. Like outreach is still outreach in order to get clients. So all of the same principles apply. Like we need to be targeted. We need to provide value. We need to be relevant. We need to make sure that it's intriguing and compelling. We need to make sure that we're courteous while at the same time uh, assertive enough to follow up. I think chat GPT just sort of helps come up with different ideas and, um, and play with them a little more and like maybe come up with new creative angles that we hadn't thought of before. 
I've started to use it a little bit more in my marketing. Like I'm pretty, um, I don't want to say old school, but it's like I really, the robots aren't there yet. So all of the previous AI writing tools that we've had in the past, which were very similar to ChatGPT, we just had to pay for them. Uh, I never liked them that much. And um, the thing that I like about ChatGPT, though, is that I can get it to rewrite things or restructure things or provide different headlines or ideas. And nine times out of ten, they're not good. Like, they're, they're not, well, I shouldn't say they're not good. They're not great. But there's nuggets in there. There's gold little things that I can mine and then apply to other headlines and things like that. So, yeah, use it as a tool, as a supplement. Obviously not your main driver. Abdallah, Adam, how do I prevent customers from missing appointments? Ah, you need a couple things. Number one is the high level advice that you need to make sure that you've provided enough context around why that appointment is valuable and why they would actually want to show up in the first place. So a lot of people skip appointments because they're just like, eh, I'll do it later or nah, I don't really care. There's no, there's no drive to go to do it. And there's also no punishment to miss it. Let's rebook it later. So whatever. And later means never. Uh, reminders are phenomenal. So things like SMS follow-ups, email follow-ups, uh, providing some kind of a homework assignment before, like, hey, before your assi uh, before your what are we calling talking about appointment, make sure to watch this video, fill out this card, do this thing. Like getting them actively involved and taking micro commitments will do a long way. The other thing is, is you can play around with where your appointment falls in your overall funnel. So are they booking an appointment after filling out an application form? Are they doing it before? Are they doing it after this kind of thing or before that kind of thing? And you can adjust the order. There's a lot of stuff there. Um, anybody that does appointments, you're going to want to re-listen to that section. There was, um, I've said a lot. So hopefully that comes in handy. <coughs> cough, cough. Jefferson, morning, Adam. Morning, my friend. Thank you for all you do. My pleasure. Thank you for being here. As you suggested last week, I've created a free PDF combined with some ads on YouTube and TikTok. Good for you. Scorecard just for testing ideas and focus. Awesome. Good for you. Good for you for taking action. That's the secret, really. It's funny. It's like when we come up with lead magnets and things like that, uh, often people will make one and they'll run with it and it'll do okay or not. And then they'll blame everything. The ads, the lead magnet, marketing, the world, the universe, everything. Uh, so yeah, your best bet is to test a number of different lead magnets. There's a reason that I have, uh, aside, actually there's two reasons. One is laziness, but the other is strategy. Uh, there's a reason why I have one main lead magnet to get people onto the email list to bring them into my world, which is the marketing cheat sheet. It's because that is the best performing lead magnet most of the time. So in the past, I had a bunch of other lead magnets. I had them on Facebook ad images. I had them on video scripts. I had them on other lead gen things. Um, but by... Basically, it got a little bit overcomplicated with all of the different funnels and the cheat sheet just performed significantly better than everything else. So why not just drive people there? Now, there's arguments against that if you've got if you want to segment your business more and so on. But yes, test different things. Good for you. ADS Media. Hey, Adam, is it mandatory to make a landing page to a client if I don't have one? I'm not sure I understand your question either. Is it mandatory to make a landing page to a client if I don't have one? So I I think you're asking like, is it mandatory that you have your own website or landing page? In which case the answer is yes, you do need a website. Um, I've got a video on how to get a free one on the channel, so you can go look that up. Is it mandatory to make a landing page for a client? Well, that depends on what you're offering the client. If you're making landing pages for them, then yes. If you're not, then no. Uh, uh, the name I cannot say because my my virtual assistant will kick in. But yeah, Balkan country. Yes, uh, Serbia. Amazing. I know. I know. Uh, yeah, I spent a lot of time around um, Croatia. And uh, where was the main ones there? And then more, where else was it? I, I'd have to look at a map to like jog my memory. I used to spend a lot of time over there. So he, in advance for a beginner, not sure the context, but all good. Michael, hey Adam, as digital marketing platforms continue to make changes to their algorithms, do you think we will see marketers move back to more traditional mediums? Um, good question. I think, like, here's big answer, short answer. Short answer is on mass, most people, no, for sure not. It's like they're going to continue to evolve and we'll, we'll go where the market goes. So even though there's changes, um, we're just going to like ping pong back and forth between different mediums whatever the new version of social media is, whatever it comes out next or whenever it evolves into something different, like we're just going to go there. I don't think we'll ever move back to old traditional mediums en masse. And the reason is, is because they're just not as effective or cost effective 
as most of these new mediums are. What's going to continue to happen is new mediums will come out, people won't understand how to use them, attention will be cheap, we will go there, we'll capitalize on the attention, people will realize they're effective, they will go there, the costs will go up, they'll become less effective, something new, and like it goes on and on and on. That said, there's some of us uh, that still use things like direct mail, we still use uh, newspaper, radio, things like that, when and where it makes sense. It's just my, my rule for if something is worth doing is does it work for most people most of the time and traditional mediums simply like do, they can't hold a what's the what's the expression can't hold a candle to it can't hold a match to it whatever the expression is they just simply cannot compete uh, in regards to like CPMs and cost per acquisitions there are exceptions but we never use the exception to prove the rule audio libros y crecimiento personal Perfect. I'm very grateful for the extensive information material you provide us and the very practical ways in which you present it. They've been very useful for me. I'm so glad to hear. And then I think you've got another question perhaps by the ellipsis, but we shall see. We'll carry on. Let's see. Where are we? Alicia, best. Good morning. Good morning, Alicia. 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 One day I'm going to get this right. I'm still scared to start a Facebook ad. Please give me some easy pointers to follow. Been watching so many of your videos, but still I feel like I'm going to just lose all my money. Yeah, the best advice that I can offer you is to go into your first ad. I don't want to say with the intention of losing money, but like I can almost guarantee you will lose money on your first ad. So there's that. Um, I don't know anybody actually that's like ever written an ad and gone in and just like Bam, magical profitability. I can guarantee my first ads were rare, like losers back in the day. And that was when Facebook was like an open ocean of possibilities. Like the ads we used to write and get away with was ridiculous. We're just like, hey, here's this thing. You want to buy it? And people would be like, yeah, I'll buy it. Uh, then it got com com more competitive. So yes, you will lose money on your first ad. So how do, you, how do you avoid that? Number one, you don't, but you do set aside a reasonable and very low budget in order to get data and feedback and things like that. Now, the way that you're going to do this is by, instead of, say, optimizing for conversions, you're probably going to optimize for leads, um, probably using an instant form. You're going to get them cheaper. They're going to be lower quality. But your goal here is to test different ads, targeting images, possibly conversion or possibly conversion objectives, not just conversions, but like I said, leads through instant form, maybe traffic, maybe landing page views, because you're trying to see what are the cheapest, best clicks you can get, only target people that are interested. So don't go after cheap clicks from people in countries that may not buy from you that you don't want to serve. If you're focused mostly on men, but you find women are cheaper, don't go for that. Like you've still got to keep it relevant. But yeah, that's it. And then just dive in five bucks a day, run them for three, four, five days, $25. It's a, a, a decent investment to get that experience and get, get that data. Robert Merrick, starting my marketing campaign for a set of boudoir mini photography sessions in April. Any golden nuggets on reaching my local market would be appreciated. Yeah, on the topic of ads, um, locally targeted Facebook ads are going to go a really long way. And then tar make sure that you're targeting the buyers of these sessions. I'm assuming women. I can't imagine men buying them in like on um, in droves for for that kind of service. I imagine it's mostly women. Uh, for April, is there anything else that we can do around April? So is there like Easter thing or spring or um, like some other thing that I can attach to it to make it more valuable? I also put some kind of scarcity or urgency on it. Like we only have five packages available. We This is only available for the next seven days. Um, yada 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 but then again just target whatever your market is and try a couple different ads and angles and see which one performs best which one gets you the highest click to rate which one gets the most engagement and shares my approach for local market local marketing targeting that made sense is uh is really just like um we call it a carpet bomb strategy where you try to drop as much stuff as you possibly can on the area because it's a local area so they're going to pass it on or share it or make sure that enough other people see it all right. Okay, I think we half answered that one, but I didn't understand the question. So you're gonna have to uh, have to rephrase that one for me. Matt C, I'm new here with you live. Love your YouTube. Thanks, my friend. I'm glad you enjoy it. Uh, L, is it better to use detailed targeting and specific location, or leave the audience and location broad and just let Meta decide on targeting the best audience for you? Very good question. Very common and popular question. Um, and the reason is, and this is the beauty of lives, is I get to provide a little bit more nuance and, and detail and context to the answers. Uh, because the, the short answer is, it depends. 
Um, like I would run both and see which one does better. But the more detailed nuanced thing is how sure are you of your audience? Right? Like that's the big factor. Are you are you absolutely sure of your audience, who they are, what they want, what they don't want, et cetera, et cetera? Because then you could either use detailed targeting or open targeting. The second thing is how good a copywriter are you? How good is your ad? Like if you've got just a banger of an ad, like it's it's the best thing that has ever been written in the world. It is such a good ad. It immediately speaks to your target market. It provides value. It's engaging and intriguing. When someone reads it, they have to click. In which case, you can use open targeting all day long because Facebook is going to put that ad in front of a bunch of people. The right people are going to click it. It's going to show the algorithm who wants it and they're going to go back, uh, back for it. So that's the longer answer is that you're going to want to try both. Uh, and it's going to vary depending on just how knowledgeable and um, expertly you know your audience. All right, Black Girls Console 2, good to see you here. Good morning back again. Good to see you. I've been doing well with my email marketing and want to learn more. Are there any books, courses that you would recommend for email marketing? Yeah, there's a few. Um, there's a few people that I really like for email marketing. One of which is in the Digital Marketing Academy. I do have a section, a bonus course on email marketing that I'm a big fan of because it's been the secret to my success. So let me put up the obligatory marketing link there. So if you haven't gone through that, uh, whoa, there we go. You definitely want to. Other people that I really like uh, for email marketing are Andre Chaperon. Uh, Andre Chaperon has a website called tinylittlebusiness.com and he's got a email marketing course called Sphere of Influence. It's really good. It's, it's more for creators than it is for consultants and it's very story-based and it's quite in-depth, um, but that's an option. There's also, who else do I like? Uh, Talking Sh Shrimp, her name's Laura. Oh, Laura Belgray? I'm, I'm blanking on her name. Hang on. I think that's it, though. Um, talking Shrimp. Anyway, she, she writes really interesting and compelling emails. The other thing you can do is just start finding people whose email lists you're subscribed to that you like their style of. Look for other people that do email marketing. Subscribe to their list. See how they do it. Uh, but yes, tons of potential. Like, email is still so big. Turf nerd lawn care. For some reason, my Weebly site went from second page to almost non-existence. I want to switch to Square pay Squarespace. Can Squarespace sites compete with WP WordPress on SEO? Um, maybe. Like the best way to find out. First of all, it's going to be kind of niche specific. So, I mean, the short answer is probably not. And the reason is, is if you ever go to Google and you type in any kind of business or website or anything like that and you look at the rankings like the number of weebly sites squarespace sites things like that they're just they're not there um it's mostly wordpress sites wordpress is pretty much the main driver of a lot of the sites on the internet so yeah i'm i'm not as big of a fan that said i also have a ton of control with wordpress and with yoast uh the seo plugin that pretty much everybody uses with it so it gives you a lot more flexibility and freedom you do not need a crazy expensive site you probably just need a pretty in-depth site with some good content uh so i would go that route 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 and i would also work on fo uh, optimizing your google business profile for a local business like that all right, Andrian Brinovanu. Hey, Adam, I'm extremely satisfied with your course. So glad to hear, my friend. Uh, but I do have a question. Will what you explain in Marketing Academy course still be relevant in 2023? Yes, 100%. And I did, and for one very good reason. I structured the course with the intention of making it uh, as based on fundamentals and principles and evergreen concepts as humanly possible. That's why we do a lot of these lives to answer the tactical things like where algorithms change all the time. In the past, when I made like say a Facebook ads course, I remember, I remember one thing extremely clear. I made the entire Facebook ads course, all the screen shares, all the everything. I literally went to publish it and Facebook changed their ads dashboard completely. It just looked completely different from everything that I'd just done. And I was like, wow, I'm... That was, uh, that was a kick in the throat. So now what I do is I focus more on like, okay, well, what is the concept behind the writing of it? Like a lot of the mechanics of things, the tactics, those are actually relatively simple, right? Like how to upload something, how to schedule a post, how to do this. What's not easy and what the course goes into is what's the psychology behind it? How do you structure something so that it overcomes objections in advance? How do you design the perfect marketing master plan? How do you go through your customers' fears and wants and dreams and aspirations and how do you locate those? So 
Yes, it was designed to be evergreen for uh, the re two reasons, one of which being as useful as humanly possible, and number two, so I don't have to literally re-record it anytime someone changes a um, algorithm or, or um, dashboard. All right, audio libros. The voice you use when translating your videos into Spanish is too childish. I think it does not fit well. Maybe you could change to a better tonality voice. Same, thank you very much for everything. Yes, so I don't really have control over the voice. For those of you that are not aware, it's this amazing, amazing software. And what it does, it's, it's sort of, um, I got early access to it through YouTube and through Google. And I'll upload a script of my video in English they'll automatically dub it into, right now it's just limited to Spanish and Portuguese, and then an audio voice will just say whatever it is that says. So that is actually a computer animated voice. So yeah, we'll, we will just have to, to deal with it, but maybe I'll pass that on to Google and let them know. Uh, hello from Hollywood, California. Excellent, glad you're here. Some of these things come in in different order, so it's cool, we'll, we can always say hi. This is Omni. I'm a local fishing company based in New York City. That's interesting. I didn't know New York City had fishing. Uh, what would you recommend as the strongest source for me to advertise on in person or online? Well, if you mean in person, I mean, uh, like if you mean by that, like meeting people face to face, then that's obviously the best thing that you could ever do, but you're limited in scale. Uh, so that's where online marketing comes in is you're able to do go from one to one to one to many. Uh, like in person is always going to beat online stuff, but it's just not scalable by any means. It's like, for example, I don't know how many people are live here at this very moment. I don't think it tells me. Maybe somewhere, 88? 88! We need more like buttons then. We only have 27, 27 like buttons for 88 people. Uh, but like, again, for me to reach that amount of people, if I were to do it one-on-one, -on -one, like that would take me, I don't know, even if I spent 10 minutes a person, like eight, 880 minutes, it's a lot of hours. So yes, that's where online comes in. All right, Jefferson, hello, it's me again. Good to see you. Is High Level the best platform for social media management, including tools like automatic posting on different platforms and stats tracking? If not, what would you suggest? Is it the best one for social management? I don't know. They're all kind of good and the same. So it's it's hard for me to be like, it's the best. Yeah, I don't... I don't know which one would be the best, in all honesty. Like, I've used Hootsuite, Sprout Social, Metricool, I used Forever, um, obviously High Level. Tough call. I try them out and see which one works best for you. If you've not, for those of you not familiar, let me see if I can pull this thing up here. Um, try it out, honestly. Like, most of the social media scheduling software is out there. Most marketing software has like a seven day, a 14 day, a 30 day trial or whatever it is. So you can go in there and try it and see which one works best for you. They all kind of do the same thing. So it's going to be more of like which one you vibe with the most. Hopefully that helps. Hang on. How do I get rid of this thing now? There we are. Chris. Hey, my friend. Good to see you. What software do you use for your live stream? Love your channel. Well, Chris, my friend, I appreciate the kind words. For my live stream, I use a bit of a... Um, a bit of a more complicated setup, but it's not ridiculous. So the software that I use, which is a lot, what allows me to like pull up your name here and do all of those things, it's called Ecamm Live, E-C-A-M-M -M Live. I do not know what it costs, but it is very cheap, uh, like 10 bucks a month. But the reason it looks kind of cool is because I'm running it through my digital mirrorless camera that goes through some, I don't know, there's all kinds of weird cables there, but it like goes from the USB-C to HDMI, and then I've got an HDMI converter, again, through Ecamm that plugs into the computer, so I'm able to get 4K video footage. The reason it looks kind of crisp on me and then blurry in the background is because of the lens that it's using, and then I use this fancy pants microphone through a, a whole other setup. So, yes, the, um, the short answer is just get Ecamm Live, start with that, and then you can start to upgrade things after, if you so choose. I think it's worth it. I like it. I think it's cool. I don't know. It provides a, a slightly more elevated experience than me just like streaming from my phone in the backseat of a car or something. All right, Alexa, good to see you. How to pick niche for SMMA and how to find clients through cold reach. All right, so to pick a niche, um, I've talked about this a, a ton in previous live streams. I don't know if you want to go back and watch. Oh, she's other Alexa's talking now. I was trying to avoid that. Um, I've talked about this a ton, but I don't. I won't make you sort through like 30 hours of other live stream footage. 
the fact is there are some that are good, but you want to match up like what are your interests, your experience, your your passions, where's market demand. Almost any of them will work fine, honestly. So it's really just a question of picking one and kind of running with it. Like all of them work, honestly. There's there's a there's a million dollar business behind almost like every social media marketing agency niche. I I can I can't think of any that aren't. Um, how do you find clients through cold outreach? You get very specific on your niche. You become the expert in it, which is why I recommend starting with something you know a little bit about. Uh, and then you need to provide value. For example, the amount of cold emails that I get and cold DMs and cold everything that I get a day, it's so overwhelming that I can't even, like there's no way we could make it through all of them, which is why if you've sent me an email ever, fun story. I used to send, like I remember in the early days and I would send emails to people and, and like, and they would ignore me and I'd be like, that's so rude. They didn't even have the courtesy to write back or say, sorry, not interested. And now that I'm on the receiving end of that, I realize just how naive that was because the volume of the hundreds and hundreds, like even with me and my assistant going through them all the time, we, there's no way we can make it through them all. So you have to understand, like depending on who you're trying to reach. Uh, it's going to be very competitive to try to even get heard. So you better have something good or you better find a way past their gatekeeper into them. Uh, there's got to be some kind of value, proof, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of stuff there. Eng Zhao. Hey, Adam, what is the best marketing strategy for one sell, one time sell service? No returning client type of business. Okay, I got you. For, so like a one, a one time sale. You sell something once and then you never do it again and that's it. So, First recommendation, find a way to not make it a one-time sale. Uh, from a revenue perspective, that's like marketing suicide. Like you need recurring, you, you don't need, but like you should aim for some kind of uh, recurring revenue, at the very least an upsell, a downsell, a cross-sell, if maximizing revenue is the goal. So that's step one. Uh, number two is you do marketing the exact same way. Honestly, there's, there's no change between identifying the market that you want to reach, coming up with a compelling offer, putting it in front of them, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the only difference is, is you're going to have to be ruthless with your metrics because you're simply not going to have the margins baked in of like a longer lifetime customer value when you're doing your marketing. So yeah, all the same concepts apply. In fact, it's interesting to me. It's a good question, but it's interesting to me when someone asks a question like, how do I sell socks and then someone after is like how do i sell boots and then someone's like how do i sell mittens how do i sell scarves how do i sell timeshares like it, it's almost always the same like always um and it comes down to just like the basic marketing fundamentals and strategies and then you just apply them and, and apply nuance and context to each one which i appreciate it takes takes an understanding of it and a bit of experience but it's like the fundamentals they're always the same so when you learn them oh man life just gets Mucho easier. Mucho facile. Uh, Dr. Andrea Dean, good morning from Chicago. Good morning, Dr. Andrea. Good to see you here. Uh, Pinkenstein, how would you charge a lot for a service that is hard to do, but hard to find big clients? How would I charge a lot for a, a service that's hard to do, but hard to find big clients? Well, first of all, I think everybody that's ever had a business will always say that it's hard to find big clients. So your struggle there, your challenge is not unique. Everybody, even things that are easy to find clients, they still struggle because then they need more of them because their price points are probably lower because there's more competition in the space. So the biggest thing that I'm going to recommend to you is make sure that what you're selling is something that they actually want and actually need. And I don't, I don't just mean like, don't, don't just brush this off and be like, of course, Adam, I, I know they want it. They need it. It's something they need. But like, do they really need it? Do they really know that they need it? Like, I know that you know they need it, but do they? Are they buying it from other people? Because if you're selling something that's really hard that you can't find people for, like, I would, we might need to reposition it and phrase it in a way that it's actually something that they want. For example, one of the most valuable marketing things that I think you can ever do is creating content. Full stop. It's like if you, anybody, whether you're a student who's in university, whether you're a small business owner, whether you're an aspiring business owner, whether you're just a random person who's thinking about things, one of the most valuable things you can do is start creating content from your own personal name and brand and building things up. But it's a tough sell. It takes time, takes energy. It's uh, there's no payoff for the first few weeks, few months, few years. Like like it takes a time, a while. So I often have to lead with like, here's a Facebook ad hack. And then once someone gets in there, I can be like, cool, by the way, 
Do you want to supplement that long term? We should probably do some content. We should probably do some branding and things like that. So you might need to find another way in. But, um, but that's going to be the secret. The other thing is you're going to have to make sure that you're really expressing the positive ROI and the benefits of whatever it is that you sell. The more expensive it is, the more, um, the more benefits and so on that you're going to have to explain. And the stronger your personal brand is probably going to have to be. So again, in the early days of my marketing career, I used to have to explain all the benefits of the product or service or basically the service that I was selling and be like, this is really going to help you with your business and put together a whole spiel. Nowadays, if I, if I was taking clients, I'm not taking clients now, but now people just ask, they're like, Adam, will you work with me? And, and I wish I could, but I, unfortunately I, I can't, I'm too, too booked up right now. But the point is, as you build up a brand and expertise, you have to do less explaining because your brand and expertise becomes the value proposition. Okay, I hope that helped. Ambitious Endeavors, hey Adam, yes, Renee, good to see you, good to see you, glad you could make it here. All right. Uh, uh, cash. Hey, Adam, actually, I didn't get any client and freelancing profile. There is no getting client. Ooh, I'm going to need context. Going to need context to solve that problem. We'll see. We'll carry on. Jefferson, my first question didn't go through. I think ignore if repeated. As a fairly new company, no, I don't think I saw it. All good. As a fairly new company with minimal followers, how should I go about testing different platforms and ads to get the best results? Cool. Well, the beauty of advertising is that you don't need followers or anything like that in order to get results. In fact, some of the biggest companies and biggest businesses um, you've probably never even heard of because they don't have large presences or followings or anything like that, but they run a lot of ads behind the scenes. For example, there's a company called Agora Publishing. Um, they're a billion dollar company, one billion dollar company, and they do mostly direct mail, at least they did, mostly direct mail marketing huge business, but like, we don't know about them. They don't have a big social media presence or anything like that. They do more so in uh, nowadays or whatever. So yes, you can do things with different ads. That said, I would recommend that you don't need to go down all of the different advertising platforms. Let me know who's your target market and your service again. Refresh my memory. You might've told me before um, because like you're going to probably be able to do most of your damage with Facebook, Instagram, Google, and TikTok. Facebook, Instagram, Google, TikTok. I'm going to say stay away from YouTube ads right now just because they add a whole other level of complexity to the elements. Like you need to have a good video as well. But if you learn Google ads, you can add YouTube ads later. Uh, but you're going to be able to get a lot of, do a lot of damage there. And of those, I would say start with Facebook and Instagram because they both use the Facebook ads platform. And uh, at least now we're, we always see higher ROIs with them. All right. Rarts. Increased my clients from two to eight in one month just by watching your videos. Hey, there's a celebration. Good job. Uh, and reading the books you mentioned. Excellent work. Excellent work. Good for you. Keep the content coming. I got new milestones to crush. Yeah, you do. Well, first of all, good for you. That's amazing. And yes, it's amazing what happens, right? When you, um, when you take action. I think that's a big one. I can't remember who... Oh, who were we talking to earlier about running Facebook ads? Yeah, we got we to gotta pull that trigger and get those things out there. So, Rarts, amazing. Good for you. That's so cool to hear. Thank you for telling me. And, um, and yes, I'll keep them coming if you keep taking action. That's the deal. A gentleman's bet. Patrick Kelly, always good. I have a similar pair on right now. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the lots of love comment we'll go with. Um, reminds me of a funny text I saw once, like forever ago. It's like, hey, uh, from uh, mom to their kid or whatever. And it was like, oh, your aunt just died, LOL. And, um, and she thought it meant lots of love. Anyway, sick meme jokes. Uh, Andrian, Adam, hi Adam from Romania. What do you choose between ABO and ACB? All right, so we're talking about um, active what are we talking about? Advantage budget optimization, advantage campaign budget optimization, ad set level budget optimization, advantage, but they change the names all the time. But essentially, what do I think about setting the budget for Facebook ads and Instagram ads at the campaign level or at the ad set level? They both work. Again, um, they really do. Like they're both fine. My preference is pretty much always ad set level. I just like it more that way. If I'm scaling up a campaign though and I want to put it somewhere else, I will run it at the, the um, campaign level. Let me make sure I said that right. My preference is ad set level. That's what I do for most things. But if I need to, I'll put it at campaign level. So that higher level. All right, Eugenio, good to see you. Cheers from Uruguay. Hey, buenos dias, mi amigo. Que tal? The voice you use when translating your Spanish videos is too childish. Is this the same? Hang on, did we just change our avatar? I might have just read it again. 
Or do we have multiple people saying the same thing with a copy and paste? Because that would be interesting. But yes, regardless, um, you'll have to take that up with Google, I'm afraid. People have to take it with Google. At least that service is there. But I appreciate the feedback. Mel, hey Adam, do you have any advice for a small startup with regard to social media marketing? We have a couple separate divisions and are wondering if we should set up different accounts for each. Uh, if you're a small startup, should you have separate accounts for different sections of your startup? The answer would be no. Um, do Should you have different accounts, like different accounts on different platforms? The answer is yes. So very rarely, even big companies, I don't think, should have different accounts subsections of their thing of their account unless they're serving like dramatically different markets and then you could but like talk about a pain in the neck trying to manage all that stuff so i think i understand if not we'll go with that um real estate brokers who do apartments and home sales okay real estate brokers who do apartments and home sales i don't know is there like is there a completely different market for them like the brokers like does someone i don't know again I'm trying to run this through my my brain of where this would work. Let me give you a, let me give you another example, and this will hopefully clarify things. If you're a photographer that does weddings and corporate, you probably still just have one social media platform for weddings and corporate, unless you're huge or you want to focus and just niche down on one or the other, which you might want to do as well at some point. L, any advice for the company which sells gift sets for customers for Valentine's Day, but the items included in the gift set are kind of pricey and the audience don't take great interest in it? Well, that's dangerous. If the audience doesn't take great interest in it, then there's nothing you can do to sell it. Uh, there's a concept by Eugene Schwartz who talked about this back in the 1960s, and he says that we don't create demand, we only tap into it. It's funny, I was actually just talking to my wife about this this very morning. What were we talking about? I can't remember. I can't remember the exact context of the conversation, but it was literally around this concept of like you can't make people want something. That's it. Even if it's good, even if it's amazing, like if they don't want it, they don't want it. Now, if they want it or they want something like it, then we can show them why our product or service or offer is the best fit for them. And we can elaborate on that and show them the benefits of it and et cetera, et cetera. But it's like you can't, um, what's a good example? What do I not want? Uh, a course on how to knit socks. You can't make me want that. I don't know, you can make it look amazing, um, but unless you found some miraculous way of explaining how it was gonna make my life better, like I ain't buying it. So you've gotta find the people that are buying the things that you want to sell. Um, if it's kinda pricey, then you've gotta obviously adjust your marketing and make sure that you're showing up in the right places. You may need to try alternative avenues. You may need to try um, tripwires or like um, those first steps, like is there a sample thing that you can sell or whatever else it is. But yes, hopefully that clarifies some things. Morph Garia, hello there, hello Morph, good to see ya. Patrick Kelly Q2, as in question two, I know that now, not Q2 of the year. Do you have any email automation recommendations for cold PPC emails? Oh yeah, Pat, you're gonna have to, um, Patrick, you're gonna have to explain that one for me again. Like, I think we're talking still about cold outreach and follow-up. Uh, if so, yeah, where's my high-level one? Da 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 da. Um, use that, set up nail gun with it. And then my recommendation would be like, I'd write my cold email. I would, again, actually this is going to apply to both, whether you're doing cold email or whether these are automations for people that are doing cold email that you're running stuff for. But essentially I would do my cold email. I would follow up probably three, four days later. Then I would follow up again, three, four days later. Then I'd follow up a week later. Then maybe a week after that. Um, always trying new angles, not just being the guy that's like following up on this, following up on this terrible i get those they're weird someone will send like a cold email pitch and they'll be like adam i'm gonna about to change your life i got a business idea to share with you do you have four hours or five minutes even to talk on the phone and like um and then i'll ignore or delete because it's a terrible email uh and then they'll follow up and be like just following up and then they'll follow up again just following up and then my assistant will probably at that point block or whatnot um, so yes, be creative, be interesting, find, find ways of providing value. That's not value, right? All right. Oh, I can't read that. Sweet, sweet. 603. Hey, I'm working on building a YouTube audience to promote a health fitness notion templates I've created. Hey, that's cool. Let me know what those are. I'll take a look at them. Um, outside of YouTube, what would be the ideal way to market it? 
Oh, yeah. And well, here's that's a good question. I like this one. Here's why. First of all, fitness and nutrition, phenomenally interesting niche. A lot of people that are involved there. Um, big market. Second of all, Notion, very cool niche. A lot of people are interested in it. Uh, so you're going to find overlap now. So now you've taken a niche of fitness and health, which is huge, like way too big to target. You've taken a niche of Notion, which arguably is still too big, but now we've combined them. So now we've got this like perfect Venn diagram of this sliver of overlap. So I like it. A um, couple things. Number one, take a look at Thomas Frank's YouTube channel. His, he's got two. One of them is on Notion specifically. You probably already know this, but look at his stuff and see where else his audience is present and active. The other thing is go where fitness and um, health people are. And that's, that's two places. That's uh, Instagram and TikTok. So predominantly Instagram, but like maybe more so TikTok these days, but take a look there and start building uh, stuff up on that. Also, I don't know if I'll be able to see it in the comments, but make sure you um, make sure once this video is done and we'll be done in 15 minutes. I got to go eat. I'm starving. I missed breakfast this morning. Just coffee. I'm running on fumes. Uh, but drop it in a comment below because I'll, I'll take a look. Um, and I could be like your I don't know how many you've sold, but I'll be one of your customers. All right. Let's see. L, what kind of things would you do to increase Facebook posts, organic likes and page likes? OK, so I would do nothing to increase page likes because um, I don't care and I don't think you should either. Not being rude, but it's like you're not gonna grow your business with page likes and they're basically irrelevant. Um, post likes, the only reason I care about post likes is because they will increase engagement and they will increase shares and other people seeing my stuff. How do you do that? You write, oh, this is gonna sound like such a, a crappy answer, but bear with me. You write better posts, honestly. Like that's the secret, you need to, do a little bit of market research into your competitors and people in your space that are getting a lot of traction on their posts and you need to learn from them. And then you probably need to start writing shorter or longer with graphics, without graphics, with a video, without a video, testing different combinations, be polarizing, be, um, be intriguing. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do to start boosting that up without boosting. Don't boost posts. Glad we clarified that. Alexandra, good to see you. Hey, Adam, do you think for a new Amazon seller is realistic to drive most of the sales from social media and not from Amazon PPC? I don't like it as much. Yeah, I don't like it as much. For me, anytime that I'm able to play within the confines of a certain platform or channel, we just do better. And it's because the platforms don't like to, they don't play well together. There's too much money involved. These are billion dollars billion dollar empires. Um, they don't want to send traffic other places. So you're going to pay a premium for it. So if you're predominantly selling on Amazon, then two things you want to do. Number one, double down on Amazon, everything, Amazon SEO, Amazon PPC, Amazon, all of the Amazon stuff. Number two, find a way to extract customer details to put them on an email list that you own. My recommendation there is providing some kind of mail along incentive. Cause obviously you don't get customer details with Amazon, but some reason that a customer would want to fill out a card or download an additional thing or get something off their next order, et cetera, et cetera. Jefferson, what courses do you have available now? Is there any promotions available? Oh, excellent question. Um, I have one and only one, but it is a bundle of the Digital Marketing Academy, three bonus courses on content marketing champion, the perfect email script, and what's the other one? Content marketing champion, the perfect email script, and another one, a mystery one that you'll find out because I can't remember that's on the page. Uh, are there promotions? No, but the price will be going up at some point. I'm not exactly sure when, but there's another thing that I want to add to it, um, that you'll get access to if you buy in now as well. Sound like a late night talk show host. Um, no, there's no promotions. And I do this for a very specific reason. It's because I'm not a big fan of discounts and, um, and those kind of things in that they tend to attract either the wrong kind of buyer or they lead to a cheapening of the overall brand and value. And considering the, the time and money that, whoa, hang on, that goes into most people's businesses and stuff, it's not my favorite strategy. All right. Amazing question though. And I appreciate it. Morph, I'm new to this marketing work. Currently looking to bring in new clients. What is a good way to sell myself? What I'm bringing to the table is my own experience, trying to do Facebook, Google for construction. All right, awesome. I like it. I like it a lot. And the reason is, is because you are already niched down and I'm assuming based on your experience and your question that you have experience in the construction industry, which is phenomenal. 
Um, Cause man, talk about a point of differentiation and like separating yourself from all of the other people doing construction, pardon me, doing marketing for the construction industry. I hope I'm right. Cause I'm really selling this up. So what's the best way to bring in new clients? Uh, if you can, if you're local, some kind of local market, local business networking group, like Business Networking International, Chamber of Commerce in your area, anything to sort of put your face out there and talk to people. Um, also, you're probably already involved with other trades and construction, like leverage those relationships. Uh, what else would I do? Those would be my big ones. It's like I'd really tap your network and then also make sure that you've got a decent online presence so that when you do tap your network, they'll have somewhere to go and research and be like, oh man, Morph's the guy. I gotta go, I gotta go see this and do this stuff. Also, um, sign up for the free trial here. This will give you an extended free trial. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, I had cool news. I talked to High Level last week um, and uh, they sweetened the pot a little bit, which is quite cool. Sign up for the free trial, get the guide, go through all the stuff, but also they're giving away through this link that you'll find on that page, a complimentary strategy session I think, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes, and they will walk you through the exact way to set it up for your campaign, your objectives, your whatever it is. So it's like literally just talk to them, tell them, hey, I'm trying to do Facebook and Google, which it's perfect for, for construction. And they'll be like, awesome, use this campaign, use this thing, here's what would work, this would work well. So yeah, go go do that. They'll answer it better than I can at this point. Uh, Mart Dobre Arano, Mart Dobre rano, my friend. Good to see you here from Piestani, Slovakia. Oh, I love that place. I'm going to go back one day. I, I spent all my time there for work. I'd like to go there just for fun. Um, I spent some time in Bratislava as well. It was actually the first time I got to ride in a Rolls Royce. Uh, they picked us up. We were staying at the, I cannot remember, the Kempinski, maybe? And they had a Rolls Royce that took you from the hotel to downtown blew my mind man like it was amazing i've never been in such a crazy car it's like they um the seats were incredible but like they shut the doors and it was so quiet which is kind of what they're famous for man what a cool car i have a minivan for the record keeping it real keeping it real uh mk zato yo yo my friend hannah give adam a thumbs up yes thank you hannah appreciate the the support yeah we got 98 people here now and 53 thumbs up so we're missing we're missing a few like buttons so let me, let me grab some water i just realized no no water yet parched ah parched parched and shaky because i'm running on caffeine and no food we'll have some pancakes soon Bruce Ellaby, good morning, my friend from Denver, if I remember correctly. Your advice on the research I needed to conduct wor conduct worked great. Awesome to hear. Thank you for letting me know. That's awesome. I locked down my first client. Good for you. That's wicked. Good for you. Your thoughts on cold calling versus promoting your company using ads. So my preference is almost always ads. Um, I genu... Okay, so... So this is my bias, right? I genuinely dislike cold calling and I dislike it from the receiving end. Like I hate when people cold call me. Uh, I just hate it. And I, I, I don't answer my phone. Like it's literally, I'm a tough guy to get a hold of. This is the best way to get a hold of me actually. But like I don't answer my phone. Um, and I hate cold calling people because I know how much I hate it. So that said, cold calling is probably more effective. But if you're cold calling people in a local area, I wouldn't do it because you're going to get a bad reputation. So cold calling is kind of a spammy, yeah, there, other people will argue with me on this, but it's kind of a spammy, intrusive, borderline sleazy tactic. I just don't like it. It's great. It works. So if you need the money and if like somebody told me today, they're like, Adam, you need to make a hundred grand in like the next month. I'd be like, I'm cold calling everybody. That's it. That's, that's my strategy. I'm cold calling. I probably wouldn't do anything else other than cold call and make offers to people because it's very fast. But again, murder for your reputation so yeah running ads um i think that answers it hannah can you share examples where direct mailing will work are a good idea beneficial thanks <clears throat> yeah so direct mail works fantastic if you have access to a good list and you have a slightly larger budget so the factors for direct mail are very similar to advertising and it's called the 40, 40, 20 rule. So 40% of the success of your direct mail or online advertising campaign comes down to your market, your list, your audience, the people that you've got. If you don't know who you're mailing, it's never going to work. You've got to make sure you're getting in front of the right people. 
Uh, 40% is your targeting and your ability to sort of find them. 20% is your uh, copy and creative and what you actually put in the ad. I think I wrote, I think I said that right. It's funny, sometimes I talk about these things so often, sometimes they get confused with other, because there's the 80-20 principle and so on. But regardless, you need to have a really good list, which means you're going to need to buy it somehow, either through a postal service, a list buyer, etc. Where direct mail works really well, and I love it, is as a client retention strategy. In fact, there's software I've I've used that I love. I think it's um can't remember thanks.io, T H A N K S.io, and it automates direct mail. And I used to do this, I don't do it so much anymore because of the the larger international audience, but it used to automate like when somebody would sign up for a course, it would send them a postcard that was looked like it was handwritten. Really cool stuff. It was like a buck, a postcard, so very cost effective. Uh, but yeah, I think that all made sense. CG Nerf. Uh, hey, bro, 3D artist. Ooh, Nerf, as in neural radiosity field. I just did a video on this, actually. I tried out some new um, new software. It's in the it's in the video. If you, you're gonna, everybody's gonna be pumped for this one. It was an, it was a fun one. Very weird though. Anyway, 3D artist looking to build personal brand, knowing there are common and famous platforms like ArtStation, Behance, Gumroad, Epic Games. Hang on, is there a follow up? I'm scrolling, but I don't see it. So let me uh, come back up to your question, if I can find it again. Doo -doo -doo -doo. There we go. Um, knowing there are common and famous platforms. So you're looking to build personal brand. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm not sure I fully understand the question, but regardless, you have to look at who you want to build your personal brand for. If you're trying to get jobs with other companies as a 3D artist, then yes, go to these places. ArtStation, Behance, Epic Games, all of that. Like, go there because that's where your audience is. If you're trying to get private clients to do work for whatever else, then maybe go there if they know to look there. Otherwise, you're going to need to go to other platforms and stations. Uh, I hope that makes sense, but I didn't fully get the question. So we will see. MM, M and M's? Does still worth learning marketing because of AI? What would you think AI replaced humans in marketing and sales field? Is it still worth learning marketing because of AI? Yeah, 100%. Like, slam dunk, easy question. And the reason is, is because AI can't do all of the marketing. And even when it can, we're going to need to do other stuff for it to give it better inputs and guidance and things like that. What is AI going to replace for humans? It's going to replace entry-level stuff. Maybe one day it'll replace higher-level stuff, but like for now, it's not very good at being strategic. What it's good at doing is finding a bunch of information and compiling it and giving it to you. So I can tell ChatGPT, for example, to write me an ad, and it can give me an ad, but it's my marketing strategy and experience and expertise that can look at that ad and be like, it's never gonna work, or we shouldn't use that word, we should use this word, or we shouldn't do that, we should do this. My favorite example of all times, and if you've been around me for any length of time, you've heard this story, a long time ago, I wrote an ad, and um, and the ad was good. It was one of my better ads, and everything was working okay, and we were getting, I think it was like $2 leads, which at the time was decent. Now it, now it would be, we'd, we'd have to pay a lot more for the kind of leads we're getting. Anyways, the ad was working fine, and then all of a sudden, I had this idea. I was like, you know what? I bet if we added the word dad bod, you guys remember the dad bod craze? We, we still talk about it, just not as much, but I added the word dad bod to the ad. That was like literally the only change, and the leads went from $2 to 50 cents around there. So it's like um, a massive, massive drop in cost. The, the campaign became like four times more profitable. And it was sort of by, by knowing and having this understanding of the market and knowing what trend to tap into that enabled me to do that. AI can't do that yet. Maybe one day, but we're a long way away. Uh, R. Nishanth, I am starting my online workshop now and would like to create the best marketing funnel. What segments are important? Okay, so you're creating an online workshop need to create a marketing funnel. What segments are important? So I'm assuming you mean what steps of the marketing funnel? You're gonna need all of the steps, right? So it's like typically if we break down a marketing funnel, we look at sort of like traffic engagement and conversion. So you're gonna need something to get in front of people. You're gonna need some way to collect a lead. You're gonna need some way to convert that lead into an actual sale. Um, but there's a million ways. Facebook ads, organic, SEO, landing pages, lead magnets. I've got some videos on that one though. So hopefully that helps. All right, let me see if I've got time for one more and then got to go feed myself and kids and uh, and family time for the weekend. 
Chris, all right, let's see, my friend. What do we got? Best way of advertising or marketing branded products sold on my client's site. Site deals with woodworking, carries physical stock of various finishes and products. Not affiliate, if that matters. Um, so it doesn't particularly, pardon me, doesn't particularly matter that it's not affiliate, but still a good question. The other thing you could probably do is add complimentary affiliate products to the site, maybe for other things. Although I'd recommend obviously selling your own stuff first or your client's stuff first, because you'll have the higher margins. So branded products sold on the client's site, deals with woodworking, carries physical stock of various finish. I think my advice here is, it's the same as, as everything, right? It's, um, I'm not sure if you're just tuning in or whatever, but I gave an analogy of like a lot of times I'll get a question of what's the best way to sell socks or boots or hats or scarves or this or that or whatever it is. And it's, it's almost always the same. And it comes down to these fundamentals um, of like, what's the, the model of the business? Is it one and done kind of sale? Do we have upsells, downsells, cross sells? Are there bundles that we can use, et cetera? So that's the model. Then the market, who's the market of this? Are we talking like contractors? Are we talking hobbyists? Are we talking professionals? Are we selling, um, are we selling to, yeah, again, amateurs, professionals, the whole spectrum, et cetera. Then we need to figure out the message. So what are the pains, problems, fears, frustrations, wants, dreams, hopes, aspirations of that market? How do we align our product service offer with them? Media sources, where are they present and active online? Might be TikTok, in all honesty, maybe a little bit Instagram, probably predominantly Facebook. It's going to be my bet. Um, or Google ads, if they're actually searching for these kind of things. And then what's my machine? My machine, if I'm running ads, is uh, straight to cart. So I'm probably putting like, um, I don't know, a chisel in front of someone and I'm being like, world's best chisel, 50% off. They click it, that goes to the chisel page. I elaborate on the chisel, I have videos on the chisel, I've got images and graphics and social proof of why this is the best chisel ever. Package, two for one chisels. Oh. And then um, and then that takes them straight to the uh, to the ability to buy. Typically with anything e-commerce product related, the best results we have is like, we'll show an ad of the product that'll take them to a sales page with the product to buy, then they'll buy the product. All right, that is it. All right, oh, hang on, no, we got to... We got to follow up. I'm going to answer this one because it makes more sense. As CGIs want to be among the big CGI and VFX studios and companies that need my services, how can I get the results if I already have a good portfolio? Yes. Again, you need to essentially publish your portfolio on those sites that you have and then probably do cold outreach to those companies. So you need to send emails, maybe direct mail, maybe phone. Um, if I find a contact at a big company that I would want to work with, I would send a direct mail package. So I would print out my stuff. I would package it up nicely and I would mail it to them physically. You're going to get better results there. You'll stand out from the crowd that are just sending terrible one cold emails being like, here's my stuff. Here's a link, etc." All right. That is it. Breakfast time. Got to go. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Amazing questions today. Really enjoyed our time together. Hope you have an amazing rest of your weekend and I'll see you in the videos coming up this week. So with that said, thanks again. Take care guys. We'll see you later.